Let's see what you make less at home. 0207 173 5555. Hear me. Okay, our first caller is Chrissy on line three. Hello, Chrissy. Hiya. Um, I'm a gay mum, and like a lot of the time, what I would do is I would mislead people when I first meet them. Um, when they mention their husband, that they have a husband, you know, I wouldn't mention that I have a wife just because a lot of people have judged me um, since I've been a mum. Um, judged in what way, Chrissy? You know, what, what have they said to you? Um, it, it's like there was one girl, and um, whenever I mentioned it, when her sister came into the room, she sort of made a point of mentioning that I had a wife, you know. And it was just the general feeling in the air. A lot of the mums have been great, but some of them, you know, look down at you, you know. How old is your child, Chrissy? He's only seven months. Are, are you are you at all concerned that if things don't move on another step in this country, that your child might be might be bullied because you're gay? I do worry about yeah. that definitely for when he goes to school. Um, but like I have met a few other gay parents that have children at school age, and they say it's gone well for them, you know. But it, it still is a worry. But I guess you worry about any child, you know, really being bullied. So. And Chrissy, did you fight your sexuality at any stage, or were you able to accept it? Um, well, in Ireland, where I'm from, like in County Armagh, it's pretty much, you know, narrow-mindedness around there. And I did move over to England, you know, because I didn't really know what it was or who it was until I met my wife now. And, you know, um, I like my life over here, definitely, because it's, it's a lot more open over here. And it's a, di it's a very different culture. Can you describe the pressure to me, Chrissy, when you're not able to be who you are? You're not able to tell everybody that pressure you were feeling when you were... In our math? Um, it, just, it, it just feels like you're denying yourself and you're not able to experiment and, and get to know who you are as a person. Which must be incredibly yeah. dangerous. Yeah, of course it is. And, you know, and it saddens me, you know, and I, I speak to lots of young people who are still going through these issues in this day and age. Um, feelings of self-worth, um, self you know, self-worthlessness and actually taking overdoses because they're so upset about who they are and the fact they've let down people, they've let their families down and so on. It's so tragic. I'll listen to this next call. Hear me. OK, let's go to Jazz on line two. Hello, Jazz. Hello there. Good morning to you. Good morning. What, what's your view, Jazz? Uh, well, you know, basically, it's, it's obviously not a natural thing. I mean, regardless of whether, you know, people say it's right or wrong, it's just not a natural thing at all because you cannot carry on mankind in that manner. Uh, and that's based on, and that assumption is based on what? Assumption. So, so why do you believe that? Well, you know, how, what's procreation, basically? Procreation is a man and a woman. Sure. You know, supposedly, or hopefully that they aim to get married with each other and then they have children, live happily ever after. Not everyone in this. Not everyone has children. Not everyone wants to have children. So why can't people oh. just? Um, what what is what is natural? What does that mean? Well, I'm not saying everyone wants to have children. Yeah, but what is natural? Yeah. Explain to me, Jazz, what natural is. Well, basically, natural natural is if you look in, you know, you look at anything natural in the world, whether it's plants or animals, you take a feminine and a masculine. And that is how you breed, basically. So you, the animal <laughs> kingdom. They have so, no, animals. I don't. I don't recall which one, but you know, they they. Yeah, we have uh, homosexual relationships, animals, absolutely. Yeah. So you, you, think, you think, Jazz, that gay people choose to be gay? Well, of course you do. Um, I, you know, I, mean, I can't speak for someone that, that, so, so I for example, that they might have feelings, but you can't, you know, that's not the way you, you were born. You, you, you can't say you were born that way. Because I, want, I, want you, because I want you to think about this, Jazz, OK? Yeah. Um, I have personally spoken on, on the radio programmes I do uh, to, to, to young gay men who have told me that they are about to kill themselves because, because of their sexuality. Mm. Now, are you seriously telling me that those young people are choosing to be like that? All of that pressure that they're feeling inside them, Jazz? Or have you, know, you, got, you, know a, or have you, pal, because, have um, you, pal, got a responsibility to start thinking again? What, what I would say, yeah, apart, I mean, apart from, the, apart from the right stuff, that is, I don't really watch a lot of television. Um, <laughs> what you do see, what you do see on the television is a lot of, you know, whether it's even, for the young girls, you might see a lot of the, the, the magazines with the keen, small little bodies that they feel pressured to do, to be, and then probably for the young men, they might see all these gays all over the telly and 
Jazz, 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 do you choose? Like do you choose to be attracted to a woman, or does it come naturally? Like, do you get up in the morning and do you say to yourself, "I'm going to be attracted to a fish today. I'm going to be attracted to a woman tomorrow, and I'm going to be attracted to David Bull the next day." Is that what you? Is that what you choose, or does it just happen, Jazz? Well, obviously it happens. Right. Yeah. So it's natural to you, but it's not natural to anyone else. And I have to say, your comments. Well, you see, what it is is temptation a lot of the time. You know what I mean? Whether it's it might, it might be drugs for some people, it might be alcohol for someone else, it might be this for another person. Can Even? I just tell you, I find your comments deeply offensive because there are so many people going through such desperate lives who, and many people within the LGBT community, actually struggle enormously with their sexuality, and many of them have said they would actually try and change themselves if they could. So people are struggling, and I, I find your comments, I'm afraid, offensive. But he's entitled to them. <laughs> but, yeah. But you're not only entitled to your comments, your comments are indicative of a large part of this population. Very important call just coming in, Amy. Yeah, we're going to go to Kieran on line four. Morning to you, Kieran. Hi there. Tell us your story. Um, I came out about five years ago. Um, I struggled coming to terms with everything, but when I actually came out, I had friends left, right and centre. Um, and then gradually after I first came out, people started to turn against me. Um, where I live, I live facing my mother, um, and I thought I'd be in a safe environment with people I've grown up with all my life. But um, gradually, people turned against me um, to the point where I've had the police involved on numerous occasions, the council have been involved. Um, the council actually told me that it was basically my own fault for wearing the T-shirt, that I was getting abuse. How old are you, Kieran? I'm 23. Um, and and you, you tried to suppress this, did you? Um, for a very long time. I mean, when I was at school, I knew deep down that I was having feelings towards men, but I was always too nervous to, to actually come out. And then when I actually made the decision, I did it because I spoke to a few friends of mine and um, I was talking through the internet. They'd come out as gay. Two They'd had a terrible time. Uh, family had beat them up and stuff through their sexuality. So I always thought it'd never be that bad. My family had been very accepting, but everyone who I considered a friend turned on me. I mean... I've had bricks through my windows and it's... Kieran, it, yeah. Kieran, to the people at home at the moment um, who are judging you yeah. and who, who are saying that what you are is fundamentally wrong, OK? Yeah. Tell them, tell them the impact that has on you as a young man when you're told that what your sexuality is is unnatural. How does it make you feel? It makes me feel terrible. I mean, I've actually, quite sadly, I've not been able to work for the past four years, it's got to the point where I won't even leave the house. I won't go outside the front door. If it's daytime, I won't go out at all. I'll only go shopping later on in the evening. I'll get taxis, which cost seven, eight quid. It's got to the point now where I'm actually moving within the next few weeks. I've been given a chance, me and my partner have managed to get ourselves a house in Manchester, and I feel safer knowing that I'm going to be living in Manchester. I've got friends over there, but where I live, it's absolutely terrible. I mean, there's kids in my area that I've had abuse of who were underage to get done, the police can't do anything. I've had CCTV installed. I've had all sorts of um, occasions where I've had the police around and the police can't do anything at all because there's no proof. I've had the police tell me as well that what, I, what I've had happen to me isn't happening because I'm gay, even though I've had abuse while it's happened to me. Karen, I, Karen, I, I, I'm, we would love to talk to you for, for a lot longer. And thank you so much for, for phoning us uh, today, Karen. Um, we've got to leave it there. Uh, a, a very brave call, ladies and gentlemen, from, from that young man. Uh, coming up towards the break, Ching, great to see you this morning. Thank you very much for, uh, for, for, for coming in. Uh, good luck with Chinese food. Made easy. Thank you. David and Gail, thank you for looking after me all week. It's been a pleasure. <laughs> it's been a pleasure. You've, you've enjoyed the abuse then, haven't yes. you? Oh, it's nice <laughs> you can come back. I'm used to it. <laughs> <laughs> all right, ladies and gentlemen, the panel.